Hey everyone, it's Ivan on TFB TV here today to talk about SIGS P320 as well as the M17. Taking a step back, if you're unfamiliar, Army put out a solicitation for a new pistol, MHS, Modular Handgun System, to replace the M9 Beretta. And January 19th, 2017, SIG was awarded the winner of that with what became the M17. Later that year, November 17th, 2017, after winning that contract, the first M17s were being built in the Newington, New Hampshire factory. About a month after that, first delivery was taken by the US Army. About a month and a half after that, late November 2017, 101st Airborne first started fielding the M17 pistol. One thing I will say SIG has done very well is pay attention to the market, where you can most certainly purchase P320. You can also purchase the P320 M17, essentially the civilian version of the military's M17. In addition to that, they put out a limited run 5,000 M17s. The P320 M17 is very similar to the full-size P320. Of course, obvious differences being Coyote Tan frame as well as Coyote Tan PVD coated slide, also has M17 mark slide, optic cutout, and one of the more noticeable things, one, obviously black controls on it, and the addition of thumb safety ambidextrous towards the back of the weapon. Additionally, P320 M17 ships with two 17 round magazines. My first experience with it was at the August 2018 press event at Sig Sauer Academy. Really incredible event, spent the lion's share of a day with P320 M17. Prior to that, I'd never shot any of the P320 series at all. Absolutely my first experience with it, and out of the gate, I was pretty impressed. They had a couple of their instructors from the Sig Sauer Academy kind of leading everyone through a number of different drills, and kind of day progressed doing more and more shooting. I was really impressed with it, both with the trigger, as well as with just the barrel, the accuracy. This thing straight out of the box, if you did your part, it would absolutely shoot. At one point, we were just kind of moving back, putting rounds on steel targets, silhouettes, and the furthest we moved back was probably about 75 yards, but out of the box, having never shot this before, most of my rounds were going on target as long as I was taking my time and doing my part at 75 yards. Pretty impressed with the performance. Coming from a background of shooting Glocks, I actually found the P320 M17, as well as the P320, actually really easy to shoot. I think largely in part with the grip angle, found it pretty intuitive. And Glocks, as much as I love them, I don't feel they're an easy gun to shoot. Conversely, I actually feel that P320, to include P320 M17, pretty easy to shoot. Admittedly, kind of getting used to that safety took a little bit of time. Definitely having spent some time with 1911s, that definitely helped. But once you, once you kind of got the hang of it, it wasn't bad at all, especially in presenting. It was really easy to drop that safety as you push the weapon out. Moving it back on the safe before holstering took a little bit more doing. Additionally, there's only so much room to work with back here and because of where the safety is, which is really intuitive as far as getting it off safe as you're presenting, doesn't leave tons of room to manipulate the slide release. But kind of once you got kind of a feel, like by the end of the day, absolutely had it down to where mag changes, pretty straightforward, pretty easy, pretty quick. Another thing to note with the P320 and M17 is relatively high bore axis. So the barrel's sitting relatively high above our hand. Conversely, you have one of my favorite pistols, HK P7 M8, probably the lowest bore axis of any pistol. And when you fire it, it more or less is moving straight back into your hand. Conversely, because the barrel's higher with the P320, when you break shots, it kind of snaps like this. So high bore axis, low bore axis, does it matter? Yes, no, not really. What it really comes down to, I think, with respect to the P320 is grip angle combined with that relatively high bore axis in that when you break shots, yes, the weapon is coming up under recoil, 
because of that higher bore axis, at least for me, sample size of one, but because of the grip angle and everything else, sights immediately settle back. You're ready to take that second shot. So honestly, with respect to bore axis and this being higher than some pistols, pretty much a non-starter. Haven't seen any degradation with respect to my skill in shooting, fast follow-up shots, any of that stuff. That day during that event, probably put anywhere between 200, 250 rounds through the P320 M17 and probably about a dozen of us out there. I don't think anyone actually had any malfunctions or anything like that. One thing that did come up was magazines loaded to 17. That 17th round was a monster. And then what would happen is there'd be so much tension. Again, keep in mind, these are brand new. Like we wiped grease off them earlier that day before we went to go out and shoot them. But what I would find is coming up here, I would go to basically charge the weapon like I usually do. And what would happen is there was so much tension there, especially being brand new. I'd be pushing, keep in mind it's really hot, my hands are sweaty, and my hand would give before the slide would give. And at one point, came back, ended up cutting the hell out of my thumb on the rear sights. After that, I was like, okay, not gonna do that. I would just C-clamp it, basically force the slide back, slingshot it forward, to load that first round when we get back up on the firing line. Obviously, that's something that works out with time, especially the springs, everything like that, but that's kind of the only issue I had. Having said that, that being my first experience with any of the P320s, I wanted to get some more time behind it. To get more time with the weapon system, I went and attended the one day functional pistol application course with Rune Nation. Great course, put myself as well as the weapon through a bunch of different paces, a bunch of different situational shooting that maybe I wouldn't have necessarily done myself, and gave me a chance to kind of run the pistol. Granted, didn't run this one, I actually borrowed a pretty sweet little P320 compact with RMR on it and ran it in this Henry holster. Both did a really good job for me. I appreciated being able to borrow that pistol, which also coincidentally had a pretty awesome custom Cerakote job by I think oldmanarmory.com to include an Eagle Globe and Anchor, which having spent time in the Marine Corps, I appreciated. But being able to basically try ultimately that P320 platform just kind of in a different configuration. I will say, having used a couple different P320s now, to include this one, I do appreciate not having the manual safety. Personal preference, I don't really care for it. One thing I did run into while shooting that course is the RMR kind of gave me some problems. I have an RMR on a Glock 17 at home, but I think what kind of threw me is going back to that basically bore difference. Like, how high the bore is on the P320 versus on a Glock. And consequently, the RMR was that much higher. So getting my presentation to actually pick up the dot in the RMR every time kind of gave me a little trouble, but that course was great. Allowed me the opportunity to ring out P320 some more, put about 500 rounds through it, and just kind of see how it was and how I was with it and give me some more time behind it. Since that course, I've also had a fair amount of time with this full-size P320 and honestly carrying an appendix for the last month or so. Even the full-size actually does a really good job, coupled with a pretty good holster. Conceals well enough for me, appendix carry, and yeah, also just shooting this. I think as a turnkey weapon, like straight out of the box, pretty easy pistol to shoot. Really impressed with one, the trigger, as well, ultimately the accuracy. Like I said, that first day, having never shot P320, anything like that, went out with a P320 M17, and granted, I was doing my part, but putting rounds on a steel target at 75 yards with a pistol, nine mil. It's pretty impressive as far as the weapon system. The amount of accuracy required for that MHS contract it was pretty significant and they came through and ultimately they won the contract. And speaking of the M17 contract, a lot of hate floating around for SIG with respect to one, the drop test, as well as 
the whole kind of lowest bidder winning the contract. Well, with respect to the drop test, it is what it is. The way the pistol was designed, that could happen. When this was dropped at a certain angle, it could fire. They immediately addressed the problem. They actually brought over elements from the M17 program, put them into the P320 to fix that. Conversely, they also took things out of the P320 and brought them over to the M17 contract. Granted, they had to get approval because the contract was written, it was as it was, but at the end of the day, everyone actually ended up with a better weapon. Both the P320 coming out of it better than it was, and the M17, that military contract, actually coming out with a better weapon than it was also per the original weapons submitted for the contract. That ultimately solved itself. The other issue being price. Well, the military for once actually went about it the right way in that they said, hey, we need all of these criteria met for this pistol for us to go ahead and pick it up. One of the things was like, hey, we need it to be able to do this. Like we need sights for it. We need all these different things to include. We need ammunition and the capability of it to fire training ammunition. When I say training ammunition, think simunition, stuff like that. They basically said, we want a turnkey package. We're not gonna go solicit a pistol and then solicit the ability to train with some sort of simunitions or something along those lines. We want a turnkey solution. So, SIG ended up going. They ended up talking to simunitions. They were like, hey, what's the price to basically get our slides, everything like that? They said, here's the price. And they're like, damn. Of course, they wanna be competitive, right? Because at the end of the day, even if you had the best product, if it's three times more expensive than the other competitor, you're probably not gonna win it. So they went over to UTM, because some munitions isn't the only one in town. So they're like, hey, UTM, like, what's your guys' price? And they're like, hey, it's this much. And I said, okay, well, how long does it take for you to guys machine a slide? And they're like, about two hours to basically machine a slide that's gonna shoot marking rounds. They're like about two hours. They're like, you know, we have a lot of machining. We can do that in like 10 minutes. So by working with UTM, they were actually able to get the cost down for the overall, like overarching military pistol package at a competitive level. Honestly, good on them. They ended up coming up with a good solution that worked for everyone and worked with industry partners to create a actually good price, ultimately for the government. Good on them. With respect to the M17, while they obviously offered a P320 M17, they do have a limited number of M17 commemorative. Similar to the P320 M17, everything on it is that Coyote Tan to include all of your controls, also features orange lamps rather than just the green, like all the other SIG pistols. Comes with one 17 round magazine, two 21 round magazines, and additionally, serial numbers marked from one to 5,000, limited. On top of that, you can actually write into SIG once you get yours in hand and get a matching certificate of authenticity with your pistol serial number, as well as a challenge coin and SIG actually sells, I think for about 200 bucks, you can pick up pretty cool, kind of like shadow box where you can display your commemorative M17. Personally, I would just shoot the thing, probably a lot, but you can display the pistol as well as the challenge coin, as well as certificate of authenticity, all with matching serial numbers. Pretty cool that they've done that for people. This pistol by the numbers, whether it's the P320 full size or the M17 variants, all relatively the same. A little over eight inches long, about five and a half inches tall, width 1.3 inches, 4.7 inch barrel, and weight wise, right around 30 ounces. As far as models, tons of different models to include those P320 M17s. They also have a Bravo model, which is all black rather than that Coyote Tan. And price-wise, big range. P320 full-size, 
around 600 bucks. When you get into the P320 M17 variant, anywhere from like 650 to 750. And then the M17 commemorative, again, only 5,000 of them made, right around 1,000 to 1,100 bucks. Overall, I think a lot of value for these pistols. One thing I do appreciate about this pistol is the fact that the serialized component is basically the trigger package. So you have the grip module. You can change it out. This right here is a medium. You can also get a small or a large, something that ultimately fits your hand the best. In addition to that, 35 bucks for a grip module. If you want a different color, or maybe you want to make this yours, you want more aggressive texture, 35 bucks, stipple this thing up. And for whatever reason you screwed up or you hate it, unlike my Glock, which I have stippled, if I screwed that up or I decided I hated it, it's serialized, like toss it, go buy a new gun, versus you're in at 35 bucks for a new grip module. I think that's pretty cool. Special thanks to Ventura Munitions, keeping TFB TV shooting, and also a special thanks to Matt from Firelance Media, provided some amazing photos for this. Overall, I will say pretty impressed with SIG's P320 platform, both the M17 as well as just kind of their different variations of the P320. I find this, for me personally, to be a pretty easy pistol to shoot. Pick it up and shoot it, no issues. Again, I had never shot it before spending basically a good solid day with the P320 M17, and yeah, it performs. All the little nuanced things too, like the fact that you have front slide serrations, whether you use them or not, but the fact the trigger's actually pretty nice and clean coming from the factory, barrel's most certainly accurate. I think there's honestly a lot of value here. If you had experience with any of the P320s to include the M17, please let me know down in the comments, and thanks for joining us at TFB TV.